With us right now, Bella Rushi. Bella, you are the founder of Symmetry Consulting. And Symmetry, we're going to spell this because it's not your typical symmetry spelling. It's Symmetry is S-Y-M-M-E-T-R-I consulting.com. Bella, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Josh, for having me. From a high level, what does Symmetry Consulting do? Sure. So what we, our company does is we focus uh, on organizations and helping them align their business strategy with their innovation strategy. So basically helping them build um, innovation through channel, uh, customer engagement, their process, their network, showing them different ways to build innovation capabilities. And, and so that sounds great. And so now um, let's pretend that you're talking to a fifth grade class and because uh, <laughs> I want to make sure that that, um, that that folks understand exactly, you know, how we do that and like why this is important. Sure. So it's basically building your strengths. So when I work with a client, you know, one of the first questions we ask is what are your goals, right? Mm. So and then we take those goals and we say, what are your capabilities? What are your strengths? And what are your weaknesses? Um, we do an organizational assessment and that helps us understand where the company is already at with their strengths and what their weaknesses are. With those strengths that are identified, we can help you build strategies and new innovations based on them. And the ones that you really need to match your goals, we help you build those capabilities. So I can give you some examples. So if you're looking mm -hmm. at, you know, if you're looking at, uh, you know, reaching your uh, audience um, and you want to build more customer engagement, um, you want to create awareness for your product, you really have to build that customer engagement and your channel developments. You really have to focus on those so that you can create awareness for your for your product or your new service. Yeah. So that it can get out there, right? And you have to get on social media. You have to get on all your channels and really build that interaction and the connection with your customers, get them excited about your product services, give them the education, you know, that they're looking for and identify the pain points. So really building customer engagement is something that a lot of companies are scared to do because they're not sure about which channels on social media to use, mm. how to find their customers, how to build communities. And that's something we help with. Okay, so I want to make sure that it's because it sounds like there's two different things that we're talking about, right? So we're talking about creating a culture of innovation, but it also sounds like we're talking a lot about engagement. What's the what's the intersection there? Yeah, sure. So it's it's in order for you know you to deliver deliver your product and your services. Obviously, you have to have a strong culture. You have to have um, a, a good alignment between your business strategies and what your brand new innovations are, right? So your mm -hmm. new services or the new product that's launching. So there's a lot of internal strengths that you need. And then when you do actually get to the market, right? How are you building the right channels to talk to your customers? How are you finding your customers? So you, it's it through traditional channels, whether it's through retail or pop-up stores that you can do, or is it through digital media? Or is it a combination of those? Where are your customers hanging out? Um, do you have the latest insight on your customers? And are you really, you know, addressing their pain points when you do mm -hmm. deliver your product or your service? So it's a really combination of everything to be successful in delivering your product and your service. So let's say that someone's listening to us right now and, um, you know, they're small companies, say they've got 20, 30 employees, um, you know, and um, they're going through some growth, um, but they want to do so in a way where, okay, you're, so Bella, you're talking about, you know, fostering this culture of innovation. What are the first, like, how do we do that? Or how can we, how can we weave that into our daily practice to make sure that we're starting that off right um, and that we can continue that because I don't think any company I don't think anyone wants to be in a company where you just kind of rest you, you just think you're going to just rest on your laurels for the next 10 years <laughs> yeah, exactly the, the um, world is moving far too quick to, for anybody to do that yes no very true um, so you know there's a lot of things that you can do but really it starts with you know breaking down those silos. When you see a lot of companies and you have a lot of divisions within your um, company and they don't share information, right? There's not knowledge sharing that's happening or they're 
just focus on whatever their portfolio is. So really, first thing would be breaking down those silos and even identifying to see if your company even has silos, because some companies have them, but they don't even realize it, that that's why they're not performing well together. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we see a lot in companies, especially large organizations, because you have so many different, um, you know, different departments, like you have your supply chain department, you have your department that's doing the research, then you have this supply, the product development, right? And then you have your marketing department. Yeah. Everyone really needs to come together and work together to share that information and share their best practices um, to move forward. We also do, you know, um, in-depth things where we're doing culture mapping and seeing where your culture needs to be to get to where you want to be in terms of reaching your goals. That's just uh, more of an extended step. But the first thing is, you know, just identifying that you have silos within your department and breaking them and how can you work collaborative within your um, divisions. Yeah. Um, and so when, when folks hire you, um, what are they like, what's the pain point that they're experiencing? How do they know to hire you? Sure. So usually um, the customers that we help out with are the ones who are looking to build um, something. They're looking to develop, deliver a new product or new service, and they have a pipeline of ideas. They're just not sure which ones to select from, which, you know, which new product or service is really going to get out there. And that's going to be uh, that's going to deliver the best value to the customers. So most of the larger companies we've seen, or and even some mid-sized companies, that they have a lot of great ideas. And some of them, they're actually trying to implement those ideas or projects at the same time. So what we're helping them to do is select the right projects, the right ideas mm. that's going to go through the funnel and actually deliver it to the market. Really focusing on that project that's really going to give you the return on investment as well as deliver the best value to the customer. Um, when you have too many projects launching at the same time. Oh, you, yes. <laughs> you, it's yeah. Nice. You know, I, I, I wonder how often it is that, um, you know, maybe we don't make like when we're inside, I, I've heard this, you know, I, I love this illustration, right? It's like, it's really valuable to bring in fresh eyes because you know, a lot of times this happens with marketing. Um, this happens in so many areas, right? So we're inside the bottle in, in our company. Like I, I can't, I, I can't do, I mean, I could do simple design stuff, but when it comes to like over, you know, like bigger branding type decisions, are you, no way am I going to try and do that. Same thing with um, prioritizing, like internally, you know, we can ask good questions, I think, of ourselves. And we have a really, you know, our, 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 our director of operations is pretty fantastic. But even then, it's like, we're too, we're, we're too in the bottle to be, to, to be able to be objective. And so, you know, for us, we have to rely on fresh eyes. Um, so hopefully, you know, we're doing good to get, you know, information from our customers, our clients and that sort of thing. And, you know, but prioritizing, you know, where should we, we be putting R and D like I can come up with ideas, but I don't know that those are the best business decisions. Um, unless I have someone objectively understanding it. And I guess that that's kind of where you come in, right? That objectivity. Absolutely. So what we do is when we help, we, you know, I also, we offer um, ideation workshops and what we do is we collect lots of ideas from uh, the organization. So everyone's invited, everyone from your suppliers, your employees, your stakeholders, right? But then how do you prioritize ideas? And that's where we come in and help. So it's basically aligning those ideas with what your goals are. And obviously, you can have a lot of big goals, right? But obviously, you're not going to be able to implement all the ideas very quickly. You'll need yeah. ideas, you'll need data to see if it's going to work. Some of the ideas will have to go through an experimental phase. So it's breaking up those ideas and, you know, and saying which one is going to actually become a project and, you know, which one we're going to work on in the future. So it's just not... Um, working on an idea today or a project today that you can implement right away because you have the resources, you have the strong capabilities. Mm -hmm. but also taking your ideas and saying, this is something we want to work on in the next couple of years. And this yeah. is what we need that data to collect, to, to build that project better so you can have more 
chance of success and then bringing it back to, you know, your current work and implementing it and then testing it out and making sure that it's worked. So it's a lot of making sure that you're testing your ideas out. You're making sure you're aligning it with your, what your goals are. Yeah. But even if you, if you even have the capabilities, because if you don't have those capabilities, you know, for example, your show, if you don't have a good social media bill and you're, you know, you're doing your show and you're trying to expand, well, that's one of the areas you would need to improve on, right? So you want to yeah. make sure and identify where are your strengths, where are your weaknesses in order to get to your next project and then develop those better to help you execute them. Yeah. Now, Bella, as an, as an agency or as a consultant yourself, you've worked with some pretty pretty great companies, uh, you know, historically. And I know that um, you and I were talking, you're like, I got some pretty hardcore NDAs here. Um, But you've been able to maybe without, you know, naming names or the ones that you can share, can you maybe kind of talk about some of the folks that you've worked with and and kind of the outcomes or maybe the challenges that that you help solve? Sure. So I I can give you an example. Um, This was a few years back where um, I worked with a leading uh, pediatric skincare brand, mm-hmm. and um, they were struggling at this time with their sales. Uh, at that time, the new market trend with skincare was all natural and organic products, um, and everyone was using them. So they started losing shares in the market because their product was not identified as a natural organic brand. Mm-hmm. So uh, yep. you know, the first thing they did is they they reformulated their product to make it natural and organic. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, we came in to help them is when we had to launch the product and we had to create marketing materials for them. So we took a step back and said, okay, what are the goals, right? So we wanted to regain the market share that we originally had because we were losing it. So all the competitors out there, because there were so many with natural organic products, um, and we looked at their we identified all their strengths. So one of the strengths was the brand, the brand name that this company has been around for a long time. It has lots of credibility. People love this company, right? So that's the brand. And then we knew that they had great channels, digital as well as channels where they were able to connect with lots of retailers and connect with them. They had strong relationships with them. Another um, great capability they had is they had really good community of customer engagement on social media already. So, and they had a fantastic product. So they had four strong capabilities in their favor that they had a really, um, you know, a, a great chance of getting regaining that market share. So we took all this information together. We developed content based on their brand trust and their brand credibility. And we really put it out to all of their channels, building content, building awareness with their customers about the new natural organic product that they just built for the skincare um, space. And, you know, through a series of time um, and lots of um, customer engagement, creating awareness, they were able to regain market share as well as increase mm. sales. Um, so, you know, it, it took a good amount of work, but just really identifying your strongest capabilities and making sure you're utilizing all of them. It was yes. the most important key piece here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I'm curious about your um, guidance on engagement today. Um, and, and what works really well with truly engaging your customers? Because again, it, it's what you don't want to be, right? Is just this monolithic company. Like you want to be, you want to build relationships and friendships and true connection with your customers. W- what are some of the ways that you see that happening effectively today, Bella? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, to create the best type of engagement is really doing work like co-creation work, which a lot of companies are starting to do. Um, Nike, you know, Lego does it. Lots of companies are doing it. DHL are doing it. Every, a lot of companies are doing co-creation work. What that really means is that you're building a platform online and you're talking to your customers and you're creating that product or service with them. So it's more than you making something, giving them a sample and saying, do you like it? It's more about this is what we want to make. This is what we're trying to do. Mm. Um, can you help us? So Involve I, them. Yes, involve absolutely. Them. Yeah. So I worked with a lip balm company a few years back and we, we built a really small platform where we had our customers um, 
that used this specific brand of lip balm and said, we want to add new flavors. You know, just this small project of us, right? Adding new flavors. Mm. We let them choose the flavors. They were choosing a lot of fruity flavors and things like that. Mm. Not only did they talk about what flavors they wanted, they actually talked about how they wanted the product to feel on their lips, which our product development theme, you know, uh, team thought that they were already happy with what we gave them. But the, obviously they wanted more. They wanted something better. So they wanted something more improved. So they, they wanted a certain type of feel when they put the lip balm on their lips. So yeah. our product development team were in, engaged in these conversations with the community, going back and forth saying, what do you want it to feel like? You know, what should it feel like besides picking the flavors? You know, what do you want this to feel like? And then someone also talked about, um, you know, it's talked about packaging that when you open up a lip balm, the packaging is really hard to open up the seal. It's not, it's not easy. Sometimes you have to like, you know, break it open with their mouth. Someone was complaining about that product, you know, team got involved and they said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, usually we use a standard plastic wrap and, yes. um, but they had to, they actually changed the wrap that they use to open it easier for the, when the consumer buys it right away. You know, you're in a CVS and you need to use the lip balm <laughs> on your way home. You want easy packaging, right? So things that we didn't, we were not looking for, we're, ha we're having this conversation with the customers co-creating this product and improving, yeah. right? And that's the best way. Now you have a list of um, customers I love it. always following you, yeah. Yes, okay, so here's my homework, listeners. Uh, here's what I want you to do. In in spirit of Bella Rushi with symmetryconsulting.com, uh, your next thing that you want to build and design or research, you know, anything you were going to put development into, uh, get your customers involved, ask for feedback, get like, have them co-create with you and watch, you know, when, when people are involved in the process, they're invested, right? And you, I mean, it's like, then when it finally comes to fruition, your customers are proud, right? I helped create that. Um, you know, um, I love the, you know, the beta process. We're, we're doing this right now internally with uh, a bunch of our customers that on a product that we want to offer broadly after summer. But right now, all of our existing customers, I'm like, hey, you know, we're creating this, you know, kind of virtual VP of sales uh, service. I'm going to give you guys like, you know, like one eighth the price, you know, for a period of time. And then let's, let's work on, you know, just kind of cover some of the hard costs involved in that. In this case, we were able to do that. And then, you know, help me co-create this. We're going to get a lot of value. And then three months later, bam, like they are going to help design the perfect product. Like everything we do, like I, I just had someone that's like, you know, complimenting us for something that we, I'm like, that wasn't me. That was a customer who came up with that idea. And almost every great idea is either because we had an immediate problem that had to be solved. And it was like, you know, we just, we tried it. And then the market told us, yeah, that's good. But how about like this? And we responded to it. Right. And we, nobody is smarter than the market. You're not. It, it's just the market always wins. The market knows and the market will tell you what they want if you ask them. Absolutely. And, and you brought up a great point, you know, once when they're involved, then they'll be more loyal to you because they yes. realize that you're authentic, that you, you care about what they feel, what they want, and that they're included. Being inclusive is one of the things that a lot of companies are also uh, putting into their core values that we're an inclusive company. We want to build services and products with our customers. We just don't want to do it by ourselves. Yeah. 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 Bella Rushi, founder and CEO of Symmetry Consulting. That's symmetry with an I, not a Y at the end, consulting.com. Uh, Bella, this has been fantastic. Anything that people should look for? Or what would their next steps be? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, please, if you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, you can contact me at bella at symmetry.com. That's my email address. And um, I'm happy to work with you. We, uh, also are happy to provide a free assessment to you uh, for the first five uh, folks that email me for your organization, just to see, you know, where are your strengths, where are your, uh, you know, weaknesses and how can we start a conversation about embedding innovation into your corporation. All right, Bella Rushi, thank you so much again, symmetryconsulting.com. Thank you, Bella.
Uh, thank you so much for having me, Josh.